Brooms, Shovels, and Space Vermin. Read by Alex Gallick. Story by Wayne Harry Johnson Jr. Copyright 2020. It's weird when you think about the habits of people or their tics. Some people, when you really get to know them, have such precise and predictable reactions to things it's as if they were hardwired exactly for that reason. I'm not talking about the weird guy at work who has a ritual on how to use the microwave or those people so entangled in their minds that they have the obsessive compulsive disorder, but I'm talking about the people that get what we call the willies. Maybe I'm pigeonholing this a bit. I don't want you to think these people, mainly women, are terrified all day by the willies but that they are highly aware that a threat is real and it must be crushed, or its head cut off if you prefer. Their skin crawls when they sense any little evidence of vermin. You see, that's why Joyce woke early from her cryotube on the massive generation ship headed to Alpha Centauri. She was highly aware of the threat. Somehow, her mind overrode the computer system and forced it to start the process of warming and waking her up simply because what she later described to the science team is that she had what her great-great-grandmother Ruth referred to as the willies. Whatever it was, it made her skin crawl, and that's why she went for the tool locker and found the next best thing to a shovel. The thermal detector had a nice long handle and a sharp edge at one end. Almost immediately, the space vermin started creeping out of the walls and light panels of the ship. Joyce started whacking and smashing at them like she had been born to do just that, and as a matter of fact, she was. Joyce was selected for her unique gift of the willies. The scientists building the generation ship to travel to Alpha Centauri thought of every contingent, including the possibility of space vermin. History has shown us how bad vermin can be on populations, from the Black Death to snakes devouring birds and destroying the forests of Guam. It was obvious that the generation ship needed a Joyce. The selection process was long and arduous for everyone. The science team used every conceivable test possible and picked only those that fell into the right zone of necessity. And Joyce was no different. You see, she came from a small farm in south central Minnesota where there wasn't any real interest in Alpha Centauri and a damn fool generation ship as the locals at the bar often referred to it. But Joyce was a little bored of watching the robots tend the fields and milk the cows. The only time she was needed was if one of those contraptions got stuck in the mud on the back 40. So, she sent in her DNA sample. Two months later, she received an actual letter. No one gets a letter anymore, but it was an actual letter on paper saying she was chosen to go because of her unique physiology. Everyone in town got a chance to hear about Joyce and her unique physiology, but for the life of her, Joyce just didn't know what makes me special. The scientists knew, of course. They found out that Joyce came from a line of women who had an innate knack at finding and exterminating vermin throughout history. Joyce's ancestors were so effective that in one small town in Germany during the Black Death, no one ever got sick. Why? Joyce's ancestor, Elsie, killed every rat that ever entered the town. They never got a foothold, and further generations maintained and used the willies. Her great-great-grandmother Ruth had a knack against mice and her mother against snakes. So Joyce, not exactly sure why she was going, but knowing she was needed, got aboard the generation ship. And then they got past Mars, got in her cryotube like everyone else, to sleep for 100 years. But the willies woke her up, and thank God they did, 
The space vermin looked like they were a cross between a snake, a spider, and a mouse. It was long, had a bunch of legs, and was furry with a tongue that jutted out as it moved. Absolutely Willie's inducing. But the more Joyce's skin crawled, the angrier she got. She went on a relentless campaign, chopping the heads off of every space vermin she could find. For months, she waged war against the infestation. She filled the airlock ten times over and jettisoned those disgusting critters into the vacuum of space. Then she sat and waited, silently. For two days, she heard not a sound from the space vermin, but Joyce innately knew better. They always had a holdout spot, a place where the last one would cower until they felt safe. So she waited, and in the pitch black on the second day, it crawled out, and Joyce, with the flick of her wrist, sent the head flying one way, and the body the other. It was finished. She swept up her mess, put the tools back, a bit worn but functional, and after a good shower and meal, she went back into her cryo tube to sleep for another 70 years or so, or until the willies woke her again. <laughs>